Greetings, I'm Councilman Roberto Trevino, and I want to welcome you to the third annual Illum, Making Spirits Bright at San Pedro Creek Cultural Park. Illum is an annual free holiday event hosted by the San Antonio River Authority to highlight the food, dance, and music of our diverse and festive community. Tonight, during this year's virtual celebration, you'll see traditional holiday cooking demonstrations and performances of cultural dances from around the world. You'll also hear about a partnership with local arts organization Luminaria, who earlier this fall hosted a citywide event featuring artists funded through the Luminaria Artist Foundation. One of those events was held right here at San Pedro Creek. Although this year's event is virtual, the park remains open and accessible to everyone during the holiday season. Be sure to visit the park before January 4th, 2021 to see the festive light displays. Thank you for joining us and have a wonderful and safe holiday season. Hi, my name is Jessica Patino and I am the director for Samba Vida Drum and Dance Performance Company here in San Antonio, Texas. Today we're going to be showing a little bit of our traditional Brazilian samba, including some samba from some regions of Brazil. Now a fun fact about Brazil is we actually celebrate Christmas in the summer. So we're really looking forward to showing off all of our beautiful dancers here, again with Samba Vida Drum and Dance Performance Company.
Olivas and I am the owner and operator of Eclectic Eats. And today we're going to be making our traditional holiday meal, which is um, arroz con andules and pernil. So I'm going to walk you through um, the steps first to make the rice and the way I make it, the way I was taught to make it when I lived in the island with my family. So it's going to be really simple. I'm going to be using a rice cooker. So um, first of all, we're going to start with um, oil. So you're going to put the oil down on your pot. It can be a regular pot or it can be an electric pot. We are going to put what is our favorite thing to use in Puerto Rican food, which is sofrito. It's a blend of um, cilantro with um, garlic and it's all fresh herbs and ajicito. It has a lot of spices, but this is the number one thing that we use in Puerto Rican cooking. Then we're gonna add the tomato puree. Then we're gonna add our chicken bouillon, which is chicken flavoring. It has a lot of salt in it. So this is how we're gonna season it. The last spice we're gonna use is sazon. Um, I use the one with azafran, so we can give it the yellow color, the traditional yellow color. And then once it's hot, we're gonna stir. So just stir everything and combine it and let it saute there for just a few minutes, maybe one or two minutes. Once you have everything going, you're gonna add um, the gandules. Gandules are green pigeon peas and I have about a can of them here. You can fi find them at any local market. Once we have that going and the heat is kind of simmering, you're gonna add the water. And I'm gonna use four cups of water. And you're gonna stir it. Once you have everything going, you're gonna add the rice. I particularly like the short or medium grain rice is the one that we use the most. Just make sure you stir it really well, combine all the flavoring in there. And then once you have it um, all in there, you're gonna cover it and you're gonna put it on rice for about 20 to 25 minutes and it should be ready. Now we're gonna make our most popular dish and it's a staple in the Puerto Rican cuisine, which is pernil. It's a slow roasted um, pork, and I have a boneless piece of meat here. It's about eight to 10 pounds. And what we're gonna do first before we do anything is we're gonna wash our meat. So you gotta make sure that you wash it real good. Once it's washed, this one is ready to go. You're gonna start by stabbing it, making little incisions so the flavoring and the marinade can um, go all the way inside the meat. So you're gonna make incisions like that, one or two inches. Once you have that done, you're gonna add um, a few spices. We have here the sofrito, again. It's a mix of um, cilantro, bell peppers, ajicito, oregano, recao, and um, a lot of garlic. And I blend it with oil. And we're gonna pour it in. Once we have that going, We're gonna massage all of it inside the meat. And you're gonna make sure that you put it inside the little holes, that way the flavor goes inside the meat. Then we're gonna add oregano. This is a total seasoning. Um, it has um, different herbs and spices, which is like dry onion and dry garlic and oregano and um, um, coriander. Then we're gonna add black pepper. And the last thing I add is adobo. And you're just gonna make sure that you cover it all real good. It's like a dry rub, but it gives it a lot of flavor. You can do this ahead of time. And um, put it in a Ziploc bag and put it in your fridge and do it the next day. And then you roast it the next day and the flavor is gonna be incredible. Once you have all that in there real good, you're ready to roast. I add a little bit of water so it can make some steam and it make it really soft. That's one of the key components to make it um, really soft and tender. Once you have that done, 
what you're gonna do is you're gonna put it, this is an electric oven, but you can you put it in your regular oven and you're gonna put it at 350 and it's gonna be there for about three to four hours. Um, if you want it more tender, you just lower the heat, maybe two, 300 and do it for the same amount of hours and it should be fall apart. Um, so this is the pork. I have it um, right here, it's already roasted. It's been about four hours for it to be this tender and it's just, it just falls apart. So it's a little hard to get it all out in one piece, but um, there you go. You have um, the crispy and tender. This is the way we serve it. everybody, I'm Pamela Martinez and I'm here to tell you a little bit about my artwork that is on display at the San Pedro Creek Culture Park for Illume Making Spirits Bright Festival. So my piece is called the Artemisia Wind Harp. It is a eight foot harp structure that is made from metal and it's made specifically to be outdoors. It is an instrument that is played by the wind. And it is my first endeavor into sculpture, but a long practice of work in sound. So this is something that I wanted to create to collaborate with Mother Nature and um, let nature have the control of when it makes sound. So I chose to display this work at San Pedro Creek Culture Park because it is at a mouth of water that runs through our city and that has been the life force within the city for centuries. So having the work near moving water was an essential part of making the connection to the work and nature. I want to thank the Luminaria Artists Foundation for helping make the partnership possible with the San Pedro Creek Culture Park and the San Antonio River Authority for letting this artwork come to life and helping make the partnership that allowed the community of San Antonio to see it in action. You can hear the Teletextile Online Sound Map the second to last Sunday of every month. We broadcast live from Mercury Project in San Antonio, Texas. We stream via Instagram and Facebook at Teletextile. I'd love for you to stay in touch by finding us on Instagram, Facebook, or checking out www.teletextile.org to see past projects in the archive and what we've got coming up in the future. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Melva. Um, we're from Timeless Sweets, and we're here to do a traditional dessert for the holidays, and it's called Manuelos. I have my helpers here. This is Samantha, this is Destiny, and these are gonna be my helpers, and we're gonna be doing, they're gonna be cutting out some shapes out. You can use any cookie cutter you want. They're just using flour tortillas that you can get from any store, and they're just cutting out the shapes and we have cinnamon and sugar just in a shaker. So this is something that we do that the kids and everybody can participate, the family, everybody can participate, adults, kids. The oil's getting heated right now and I wanna test it out with a couple of pieces that they have here. They cut out the heart out of here, so I'm just gonna use the heart to try it. It fries up real quickly. 
So this is just gonna be my tester and the oil's ready to go. So the next step, we're just gonna start dropping them in the oil. And they don't take long to fry up. They just take a couple of seconds each side. They'll, they will puff up. Excess oil, just drip it off. And then we're just gonna sprinkle it with some cinnamon and sugar on it. So next I'm gonna show is a easy recipe to do a Mexican chocolate ganache. All the ingredients we're gonna need is just heavy cream and a block of y'all's favorite um, Mexican chocolate. And we'll getting a pan ready at medium heat. So what I'm gonna do is just pour like three fourths of a cup of um, heavy cream into the saucepan. Just get it going, heat it up. So this, and then we're just gonna drop the chocolate in there. Then just start stirring it to break it up. And whatever you don't use, you can use it to do like a cup of hot chocolate, some milk. And now we're gonna pour it into a bowl just to have it so it can start cooling down. The kids, everybody pick out whatever topping they want. And you could do all assortment. You can do fruit, you can do Mexican chocolate. They're just drizzling up Mexican chocolate which is just heavy cream and a, a block of Mexican chocolate in there. And they could just sprinkle whatever topping fruit, um, assortments of fruit, sprinkles, chocolate chip, whipped cream. Now I'm gonna display one. I'm gonna hit it with some whipped cream. Some Mexican chocolate. Some fruit. So this is how I like to enjoy it here in my home. Um, thank you for joining us in this timely suite. So thank you and y'all have a safe and happy holiday. Thank you. My name is Mia Rodriguez and I am the director of Compañía Folclórica del Alamo. We are a professional folklorico dance group based here in San Antonio and we love to spread our culture and awareness of traditional Mexican dance. Today we'll be performing El Relámpago, El Son de la Negra and La Madrugada for your enjoyment and we thank you so much for joining us here today.
Mr. AOKs. My name is Cindy Harris. And I'm Minister Tanya Chase. Black Eyed Peas is a crop raised to feed animals during the Civil War. And after that, it became a delicious and nutritious food. It's a bean rich in fiber, protein, potassium, and it's delicious. Many people eat Black Eyed Peas during the New Year's to bring in prosperity. Now let's go back in the kitchen with Chef Steven to see how we prepare our traditional black eyed peas. Welcome to Mr. LK's kitchen. You're cooking with Chef Steven today. And today I'm going to be cooking black eyed peas for you guys. And today I have a half cut onion. 
And from there, we got a tablespoon of garlic. And from there, we have a tablespoon of butter. And then also, we have also a tablespoon of black pepper. And then come back with a tablespoon of chicken base and also a tablespoon of salt, kosher salt if you prefer. And from there, we're gonna go on to, I soaked the black eyed peas for already an hour. As you can see, them soaking right here. I already have a pot already set up to where I can just start throwing in my ingredients. So we're gonna start off with the chicken base first, the salt, the black pepper, the garlic, and the butter. So we're gonna use, a, I use an olive oil, spray it on. Get your onions. Get that sizzle going in there. The black eyed peas. Let them render down until they get, when the onions render down, they get a little sweet. So we're gonna caramelize them a little bit. Like two minutes. You know, onions bring a lot of flavor to every dish, so can't go wrong with the onions, you know what I mean? <laughs> so once your onions start getting a little char on them, you can add them to the black eyed peas. Try to get them all out of there, you know what I mean? Okay, we're gonna stir that up in there real good. Now you wanna let these simmer for 45 minutes to an hour. You know, simple but good. These have been simmering for an hour right here. Very flavorful. These have rendered down real good. So these bad boys are ready to go. Shania and this is Vishruti and we are the captains of Texas Bhangra which is a collegiate competitive dance team from the University of Texas at Austin. So just a little bit of history about this dance style. Bhangra is a very energetic folk dance and music form that actually originates from the Punjab region of India uh, around the late 1800s. So Bhangra was traditionally done as a celebratory folk dance in Punjab as a way to celebrate uh, the coming of spring and the start of the harvest because uh, there was a big emphasis on farming and agriculture in Punjab. So the dance would be performed at a festival that occurs every spring called Vaisakhi, which would celebrate um, many things such as the Punjabi New Year, the founding of Sikhism, and of course the start of the harvest. And Punjabi farmers would also perform this dance while doing different agricultural chores, which is why a lot of the dance moves um, in Bhangra actually were inspired from doing different farming activities. Bhangra traditionally was performed with a sound of a large drum called a uh, dol and also bolnia, which are short sets of lyrics that often describe stories and scenes from Punjab. These scenes often have um, themes of love, celebration, and patriotism. And Bhangra has evolved to be a high energy, stamina driven art form that is like performed all over the world. And we actually have yearly competitions and um, competitions internationally. Um, so Texas Bhangra is just one of these competitive teams, but we're super excited to share with you Punjabi culture today and our set from our 2020 competition season. Texas. 
ਉਹ ਅਸੀਂ ਸ਼ਹਿਰ ਡੈਲਸ ਆਏ ਜਿਗਰਾ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਤੋਂ ਲਿਆਏ ਅਣਖ ਮੜਕ ਦਾ ਸ਼ਿੰਗਾਰ ਲਾਇਆ ਘੁੰਗਰੂ ਨਖਰੇ ਦੇ ਪਾਏ ਉਹ ਜੋਸ਼ ਪੰਜਾਂ ਦਰਿਆਵਾਂ ਦਾ ਪੰਜਾਂ ਦਰਿਆਵਾਂ ਦਾ ਸਾਡੇ ਅੰਦਰ ਭਰਿਆ ਭਗੜਾ ਸਾਡਾ ਦੇਖਤਾ ਮੋਰ ਪਹਿਲਾ ਕੋਣਾ ਭੁੱਲ ਜੇ ਇਹੋ ਜੇ ਜੋਸ਼ ਤੇ ਜਜ਼ਬੇ ਨਾਲ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਸਾਹਮਣੇ ਪੇਸ਼ ਕਰਨ ਜਾ ਰਹੇ ਆ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਦਾ ਪ੍ਰਸਿੱਧ ਤੇ ਅਮਰ ਰੋਗਨਾਥ ਭੰਗੜਾ ਭੰਗੜਾ ਭੰਗੜਾ
two, I let one go. Thank you for joining us for the third annual Illum, making spirits bright at San Pedro Creek Culture Park. It has been wonderful to watch the dance performances from all the amazing groups and learn about the cultural cuisines from around the world. We appreciate all the talented chefs and gifted dance groups who have joined us. The different cultural backgrounds and holiday traditions honored at Illum share a common thread that recognize the importance of community. This is why the San Antonio River Authority hosts the annual Loom event at the San Pedro Creek Culture Park so we can learn about the various holiday traditions celebrated in our community. And in doing so, we can come together to appreciate each other. And the cultural diversity that makes our community so strong. Special recognition should also be given to the San Antonio River Authority Watershed and Park Operations staff who maintain the San Pedro Creek Culture Park and installed these beautiful holiday lights. It has been great to see this beautiful place in the historic city come to life during a challenging year for our community. We hope you enjoyed this year's virtual Illum event. And while we couldn't host this year's event in person, the San Pedro Creek Culture Park is open for you to enjoy during this holiday season. So please come down and experience this beautiful park which is filled with wonderful public art and holiday cheer. As we close this year's Illum at San Pedro Creek Culture Park, the San Antonio River Authority family extends warm holiday wishes to all the residents in San Antonio. And throughout the San Antonio River Basin, we wish all of you a safe holiday season and a very happy new year. Thank you so much and good night.